said that a person is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sajda and this is the time you should increase your supplication who is better in speed than one who invites to the way of thy Lord works righteousness and says the release Since the musical instruments are haram, a human being imitating the haram musical instrument, according to scholars, is also haram. Peaceful, peaceful, peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. The third question from Muhammad Sirajuddin, Lahore, Pakistan. Most of the Muslim countries in the world are facing problems. They are being put on sanctions, being boycotted, they are being blacklisted, blackmailed, threatened or attacked. Muslims in most parts of the world are being humiliated, they are being persecuted, oppressed and even lynched. According to you, what is the solution? I do agree with this brother Muhammad Sarajuddin from Pakistan that unfortunately today we find in the Muslim Ummah most of the Muslim countries they are being blackmailed, they are being blacklisted, their sanctions have been put, they are being threatened, they are being attacked for no fault of theirs. Muslims are being humiliated, there are rights, Muslims are being lynched. What is the solution? According to me the solution Allah gives in the Quran is Surah Imran chapter number 3. Verse 103 where Allah says that wa tasimu bihablillahi jamia wa la Hold all together strongly to the rope of Allah and be not divided. If the Muslim Ummah is united, then inshallah will be a strong force and no one will be able to bully us. The problem today is that the Muslim Ummah is divided and we are not close to the Quran Sunnah. The only way that Muslims can be united is holding the rope of Allah. The rope of Allah. It is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So if all the Muslims hold strongly to the glorious Quran, which is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the things of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that are there in the Sahih hadith, if we hold strongly to this and if we are united, then we will be a strong force. Today, there are about 2 billion Muslims in the world. Out of 7.75 billion human beings in the world, more than 26% of the world population today, they are Muslims. If you see the example of China, China, about 1.4 billion, approximately 18% of the world population today, they are a big force. And they are so big that they least bother about the rest of the world. They themselves are 1.4 billion. Do you know whatever social media that is there throughout the world is influencing the world, but it's not influencing China. Because they have banned Facebook, they have banned YouTube, they have banned Google, they have their own alternative. They have Baidu, they don't have WhatsApp, they have got WeChat. So they have got their own alternative and 18% according to them is, is a big chunk. That's the reason today they are number two in the world. But in many aspects, they're number one. And the way they are developing, coming from very low, the way they have come up in the last few decades is phenomenal. Because they're united, so we have to take the good points. There are many negative points of China, but the good point is they're united, and they themselves are a big force. So much so that even America is afraid. What my suggestion is that the Muslims should be united. They can have their country, no problem, but as a whole, we should be united. Today, we have the United Nations Organization, UNO. So whatever UNO say, most of them follow except the big superpower, 
the five or six countries which have got the veto power. Besides them, everyone has to follow. If they don't follow, then they twist their arm, they put sanction, they put embargo, and they, they have arm twisting policy for their own benefit. If they want to attack, if they want to take over Iraq, they create false, the big superpower, America and UK, they create false evidence and they attack, attack Iraq, not that Saddam Muslim was a very good Muslim, but what right did America, USA and UK to attack Iraq? And after they attacked, Iraq was worse than what it was before. What were the Muslims doing? They were just sitting. They were fighting among themselves. We Muslims should be united, whatever said and done. First of all, we should remove, let our differences aside, and we should unite. We may not agree with certain policy of the other Muslim country, but on the basis of Quran and Sunnah, we should unite, and we should have our own united Muslim organization. Like they have UNO, we should have UMO. All the 57 Muslim countries should have united. Forget about what we have in the past. We have some organization, but they are not effective at all because they're controlled by one or two. We should be united on the basis of Quran. If we are united on the basis of Quran, let Quran be a constitution. Practically, not theoretically. There are some Muslim countries, theoretically, Quran is a constitution, but most of the things which Quran prohibited is goes on in that country. It's only for theory. We should practically have Quran as a constitution and have united. And we should have alternatives. Like how there is a World Trade Organization, WTO. We should have a World Trade Muslim Organization, WTMO. And I'll give you an example. We Muslims, we have the GCC, Gulf Cooperation Countries. The six countries, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE, Qatar, Oman, Bahrain. These six countries, are close to each other and they produce oil, they have got petrol and if they fight among themselves, the others will take advantage. So many years back, they made a cooperation, Gulf countries cooperation, so that they can fix the price, so that everyone benefits. In this way, not only should we have for the petrol, we should have for palm oil. The two Muslim countries which produce majority of the export palm oil is Indonesia and Malaysia, these two countries. So if all the Muslims come together, we'll have control over palm oil, we'll have control over natural gases, we'll have control over petrol. If all unitedly, we'll be a big force. And if someone tries to bully us, all of us will be united. Unfortunately, today, many of the Muslim countries are helping the enemies of Islam in attacking the other Muslim country because they want to have an upper edge against the Muslim country. It is totally haram to do this. One Muslim country is being partnered with other non-Muslim country to overpower the other Muslim country. This is totally not allowed. We should be united. We may have our differences, but just because we want to prove that we are better than the other Muslim country, we are seeing to it that we are spending money to destroy our Muslim brother. Today we have some of the Muslim countries are spending billions of dollars to destroy the other Muslim country just because they want to be superior than the other Muslim country. This is against the principles of Islam. If all the Muslim countries unite, whether big or small, whether powerful or not, if all unite, if we have a united army, a Muslim army of all the countries put together, then no one will be able to blackmail us. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the black gold. We have the wealth. If we unite, we should use this wealth to promote Islam, not to destroy Islam. So if this is there, then we have all the international organization. If there is a WHO, World Health Organization, we should have a World Muslim Health Organization, WMHO. And these health rules should be based on Quran and Sunnah. Unfortunately, we are blindly following the rules made by the non-Muslims. Some may be correct, some may not be correct. So if we have unity amongst all the Muslim countries, all the 57 Muslim countries, more than 2 billion Muslims, if there is an Interpol, international police, there should be an Islamic pole, Islam pole, that is Islamic police. If we have 
unity in all aspects of life. And if some Muslim country is breaking the law of the Quran and Sunnah, the other Muslim countries can get together and correct the Muslim country. Why should we allow the non-Muslim to interfere in the affairs of the affairs of the Muslims? So if we have an internal check amongst ourselves and our constitution should be Quran and the Sahih Hadith, if we follow this, inshallah, within a few years, within a decade, Muslim country will be on the top. And irrespective of what's happening today, we find the question posed about the Muslim leaders and the Muslim countries today, there is one silver lining. The silver lining is that there is a hadith, there is a prophecy of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that towards the end of time, and if you go on my Facebook, I've started a series of the signs of the end of the world. Minor signs and major signs. And there are more than 80 minor signs out of which there are approximately 45 that have already occurred. And there are approximately 40 that are pending, not yet occurred. And then there are 10 major signs. But towards the end of the world, our beloved Prophet Muhammad prophesies that Mehdi al Salam will come, Isa al Salam will come, Mehdi al Salam, Mehdi al Salam would be the leader, and the Muslims would rule the world for seven years. That would be the golden years for the Muslims. And that time, inshallah, they will follow Islam and the Khilafat again would be revived. And that time, whether you want it or don't want it, I want it or don't want it, this would be the best time. So there's a silver lining. I only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may we live till that time when Mehdi alayhi salam come so that at least we will support him. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has given Basharat that that group of Muslims that will support Mehdi alayhi salam, they have been promised paradise. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he come during our time, during my time and I would be the first person to support him and would love to see how Islam flourishes. And we wait for the time, till the time he comes, we don't know how long will it take, few weeks, few months, few years, few decades, Allah Allah. What we should do, we should follow Quran and Sunnah and see to it that we force our leaders to follow Quran and Sunnah and the Muslims should be united on the banner of Quran and Sahih Hadith, inshallah again will be a superpower. Peace. Next question pose by Kinsa Saif from Lahore, Pakistan. I am an electrical engineer. I want to say that you are my favorite human being on this earth. I am a huge fan of yours. May Allah grant me the iman you possess. Amin. And may Allah give you the reward for your hard work in his path. Amin. May you live a very beautiful and long life. Amin. Many E's are there. Amin. We need you a lot. The Muslim Ummah needs you. I also want to spread Islam and become a Dai. Please pray for me. Inshallah, may Allah make you a Dai. I really wish I had a father like you. The values and Islamic teachings of Islam you have given to your children, I wish you were my father. Sir, I want to ask one question. Hope it won't be personal. I see you as a perfect human being, but everyone has flaws, right? Yes, you are right. I want to know what are your bad habits you want to change or what is that bad thing in you which you want to change or trying your level best to overcome that thing. I am asking because I believe that there would be nothing you want to change, right? Question mark. Sir, I also want to ask what is your favorite food and of which country? I think biryani must be your favorite, as you have mentioned biryani in your talks a lot. The sister is basically, she's a fan of mine and, and she has praised me and may Allah not hold me responsible for whatever she has said. Uh, may Allah forgive her for what she does not know about me and may Allah make me better than what she thinks about me. Regarding, she said that she thinks I am a perfect human being and that's totally wrong and she says that every human being has a fault and she's right. My answer is that I have got several umpteen number of faults. The best exemplary human being is our beloved Prophet Muhammad And Allah says in the Quran, Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, that verily in the Prophet will you find a beautiful pattern of conduct. 
Allah says in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 21, Verily, in the Prophet is a beautiful example to follow. So the best exemplary human being on the face of the earth is our beloved Prophet Muhammad He is the best. Regarding what are the faults in me, Allah says in the Quran, it is human to err. I have got many faults. What would I like to change? Number one, I would like to increase my knowledge. The knowledge I have is less than a drop in the ocean. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me more knowledge, more knowledge. And I pray Rabbi Zidni Ilma that may Allah increase my knowledge. And I keep on praying. And I do a lot of du'as for many things. For halal income. And may my actions be accepted by Allah. There are many du'as. Regarding one flaw that I have that what do you say in English language? I'm a perfectionist. No human being is perfect. I know that. But there's an English word called a perfectionist. And I want to make everything the best. This trait of being a perfectionist is good and bad both. In most of the things it benefits me. But sometimes it becomes a burden. Everything that I want to do, I want to do it to the best. And sometimes things which are not important also, I waste my time trying to make it better. I'll give you a simple example that when I send text messages to my staff, and some of my staff don't even know English well. But since I have to communicate, they send me a message. And when I'm giving them a reply, because of the typo error, O becomes I and I becomes O. And if the spelling is wrong, there's a typing error is there. I go out of the way to go and correct it and read it. That's not required. The person doesn't know English well. So what difference does it make that if there is a spelling error? But that is my nature. I'm a perfectionist. I'm not a perfect human being at all. I'm a perfectionist. My nature is to try and make everything to the best. And that's very helpful in the field of Dawa, in the field of Islam. I try and strive a lot to see to it that whatever I do, whether it be a little thing or a medium thing or a big thing, I do it. I do it to the best of my ability. This is good and bad also. More cases it is good but sometimes it wastes your time in small things and it prevents you from doing other good things i pray to allah ta'ala to to remove all my faults and and i pray to allah ta'ala that may he accept my effort whatever is in his way the main thing is may allah accept your effort and whatever said and done one thing is for sure that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me millions and billions of times and the niyama that he has given me I would not like to exchange my position with anyone in this world and all the people that I know I don't know everyone in the world but all the people that I know the kings and the presidents and the prime minister of the country and the celebrities all that I know I am happy to be what I am as I am as a package there are many things I want to improve but if anyone tells me that if Allah gives you the option, would you like to swap your position with anyone in the world living today? I'm happy with what I am. I'm not claiming that I'm the best human being in the world. No way am I claiming that I'm the best Muslim in the world. There may be many Muslims who may be 100 times better than me. We may not be doing about them. But among the people that we know, the kings, I'm happy with what I am. Because as a package, I'm happy that my akhira at least is secured, inshallah, if Allah accepts my efforts rather than the position of these celebrities and these kings and the prime ministers and the presidents how many of them would go to jannah allah knows the best so whatever i am i thank allah for the position he has given me for all the qualities i have got very very negligible qualities but allah has put love in the hearts of millions of people who love me so the love is not because i'm a good speaker it is because allah has done a favor to me and Allah has put love for me in your hearts. Otherwise, there are thousands of people who have more knowledge than me. There are tens of thousands of people who are more intelligent than me. There are tens of thousands of people who are better orators than me. But yet Allah has put that love in the hearts of the human being for me. There are hundreds of thousands of non-Muslims who love me. There are millions of Muslims who love me, alhamdulillah. So this is only haza min fazli rabbi. It is only because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what Allah has given me niyama, I would not like to exchange my position with anyone presently living in this world. There may be hundreds of people better than me who I may not be aware of. 
And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive my mistakes and forgive my sins. Regarding the last question, that which is my best food? Is it biryani? My best food, before I was married, it was a food made by my mother. And now, it is the best food for me, is the food made by my wife. I'm a person who's satisfied, mashallah, because I see more for the things which will get me benefits in akhirah. The food that my wife makes, I'm not claiming she's the best cook, but for me, she makes the best food for me. And I would prefer the curry khichdi made by my wife than the biryani. I do use the word biryani in my lecture because biryani is a delicacy for the people of the Indian subcontinent, for the people of India, for the people of Pakistan. That is the reason I give examples of food which are popular. If it's a curry khichdi, that will not be the best food for many of the human beings. So the simple food made by my wife, I prefer than the biryani made by the chef outside. And I'm very satisfied and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give me this position. Question posed by Kashfia Meherin. Assalamu alaikum, sir. This is from the Facebook, just received. What will we do in Eid al Adha during? this coronavirus pandemic situation? Is it compulsory to give qurbani during this situation? As you know that qurbani is a recommendation of the Prophet, that those who can afford should give, those who are poor they need not give, but those who can afford should give, even one animal for the full family sufficient. If the person can afford and give one animal per person, one goat, that's also acceptable. But those who have the means to give should give. Why should coronavirus Stop a person from Qurbani, I don't know. During coronavirus, yet we're having mutton, we're having beef, we're having chicken. If you feel personally because of the situation in your area, you cannot slaughter, then very well you can give to an organization to slaughter on your behalf. But if you have the means to give Qurbani, you should give Qurbani, it is recommended. And coronavirus should not stop you from that. Ismail Ahmed Naqs from Somalia. My question is, how does a person go out buy a home in the west without interest riba. As far as if you don't have the money to buy the house completely, then but natural you should not take loan from the conventional bank which is riba based that is, is haram. But many of the western countries have Islamic alternative. You can go to an Islamic bank, whether it be in UK, whether it be in America. There are Islamic banks which work on the Sharia principles. You can take a loan from the Islamic bank, which is not based on riba. It is based on a particular system called Ijara and various other options are there. Or it can be cost plus. In this system, very well you can take from Islamic bank and pay in installment. This is not dealing with riba. This is one of the ways that you can do or, or there are many Muslim organizations which have a pool of money where they internally help members among themselves, where they give a loan to the member of the organization who pays in installments. So as long as it is not riba based, it is as per the Sharia, it is Sharia compliant, very well you can use this system in purchasing the house. But taking from a conventional bank which is riba based is totally haram. Rit Banik. Sir, I became a big fan of yours since few months. I admire your knowledge. I was a non-Muslim, now I am a Muslim by belief, but not yet official reversion has taken place. Inshallah, that too will be done. As far as Rid Banik is concerned, if you believe that you are a Muslim and you believe that there is one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, you are a Muslim. There is nothing like official reversion in Islam, like in which they have in other religions like uh, baptism or tying the thread, no. In Islam, as long as you believe that there is no one worthy of worship and there is no God but Allah, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, you are a Muslim. You don't have to tell to the world, but the moment you become a Muslim, you have to follow the rules and regulation of Islam, you have to pray five times a day. So if you do not tell people, for you to pray, you may have to hide and pray. So my advice to you is that tell the people as soon as possible, so that it will be easier for
for you to practice Islam. Since you believe in Islam, according to me, you're already a Muslim, but see to it that you fulfill your faraiz, be in the company of those who are practicing Muslim so that you learn more about the deen and you practice it. If you tell to the others, people may feel bad, may feel hurt, but it will be easier for you to practice your deen and easier for you to go to Jannah and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he accept your efforts. All your past sins have been forgiven the moment you accept Islam and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put you in Jannah and Amen.